Threads is a drama that was broadcast on the BBC in 1984 and directed by Mick Jackson. Yeah. It's, uh, it focuses on a young couple, well, kind of focuses on them for part of the film, um, called Ruth and Jimmy, who uh, are young and you know, just starting out in life, ready to get married and just bought a flat together. Um, so we see you know, them uh, interacting and their parents meeting for the first time, things like that. Um, but in the background of, of a lot of the scenes, there's newspaper headlines and news reports and radio um, talking about a conflict um, in the Middle East, mainly focusing on Iran, and uh, tensions rising between the US and Russia, uh, much like today. So yeah, and, and you can you know the the characters themselves are kind of oblivious to it really. We you see them watch the TV a couple of times when you know when things start getting really bad, um, but for the most part they you know they're just getting on, and you can just hear stuff in the background or you can see it, see the headline in the background. Um, so then you know you can pay attention to it, but they're not really paying any attention to it. Um, and then we see protests and things you know about nuclear weapons and things like that because obviously in the eighties. You know, Cold War was still going on, and you know there was a lot of concern about nuclear war, yep. uh, which bore you know quite a few films and and TV programs and stuff, including including Threads, and um, inevitably the bombs drop, <laughs> and um, <laughs> it, I, I didn't mention it's set in the the city of Sheffield uh, in the UK, and um, yeah, and the city is decimated basically, and. Um, we then follow the, the characters as what happens to them. And none of it's pleasant, let's say. <laughs> There's nothing great about it. There's no heroic acts. Um, it's just misery and depression and utter despair for everyone involved. Yes. Which, you know, is probably quite accurate, to be honest. Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> I think that's why this is so good, this film. Mm. I mean, it is, it, it is terrifying, yeah. this film. I saw this, I think I saw it about 20 years ago, you know, when you're 20 and life's kind of <laughs> happy and you don't think anything's going to happen and then when you get older and you realise, oh, actually, I'm not going to be around forever mm -hmm. and then you see what's going on in the news and then you have to watch this again and you're like, <laughs> oh my God, this film is actually terrifying. Yeah. It is terrifying, mm -hmm. this film. And it's, um, it's filmed as like a docudrama as well, so there's, you know, there, there is a bit of voiceover which explains certain things, and there's text coming up on the screen that tells you certain facts about. Yes, yeah, so it's almost like things. you're, it's almost like you're kind of in their future watching a documentary yeah. about what has taken mm -hmm. place. Um, but it is terrifying, actually, mm. and it's it's but it's really well done. Oh, it is absolutely it's really yeah. well put yeah. together for something that was on TV. For something that's on TV, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of obviously there's a lot of kind of documentary footage um, of maybe well, obviously you know actual nuclear clouds yeah, and yeah. things it's all edited together really really well yeah. and not i mean even even when the bombs start to hit you know there are, it's i think it's done really well yeah you know? no, absolutely I don't know what is, the yeah. budget was but it was it was done really well mm. um and i think I, I mean i like the fact that it doesn't concentrate it concentrates on so i've never i mean i you know i i like war films mm -hmm. but one thing that annoys me about war films is they're always set in the war yeah obviously um, but what I but I because I like uh, when it comes to history, I'm very interested in social commentary, mm. and I always I always quite like to see war films that are set on the home front, yeah, so yeah. to speak, and that's kind of what this is doing. So you are actually looking at real people, and the, apart from a couple of there's a, there's a kind of an office, isn't there, with some kind of government type people in, yeah, like an emergency custody. committee, yeah. yeah, there's a doctor in there. Mm. But apart from that, you are solely concentrating on. Just regular people. Regular people, yeah. um, and in particular, this, this young couple. So it was written by Barry Hines, Hines, who is mostly famous for... Well, he wrote the original novel to Kez, mm. which we then went on to... Um, uh, which was made by Ken Loach. I think he and Ken Loach have collaborated a few times. Yeah, I think they have, yeah. yeah. And actually, I think he clashed a bit with um, with the director of Threads. Uh, yeah, because, because he wanted to be more class. involved, and Mick Jackson just wanted to do And plus, so, yeah. Mick Jackson, I think, came from a middle-class mm. world, <laughs> whereas Barry Hines was working class, and they clashed over mm. that, uh, which they did a lot of in the 80s. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, as you mentioned, also what's really interesting is I think, I think Britain in the early 80s was quite a tense time. Mm. I mean, there were protests going on there were demonstrations there were a lot of striking that was going on yep. um yeah, the there IRA was, going on yeah Falklands would yeah. just come out of the yeah. Falklands war and there's also the um the Greenham Common Women's Peace movement right which was basically Greenham Common was an RAF base that 
that held um, nuclear weapons. Right, right. And these women, I think originally from Wales, they came along to protest it. Uh, and it was, I mean, the, the camp was set up, which stood for 20 years, and there was a woman that was killed during the protest by, uh, she was struck by a policeman. So I think that's a really interesting point because mm. there clearly was, I mean, we had, there were lots of peace movements, not just here, but in America as well. So I think this felt like, you know, it was a good time for this film to, to be produced, yeah. to come out. I mean, I think they probably um, used, you know, you can tell, you know, when it's file footage or news footage um, of protests and things because it just, you know, you could, you could just tell. Um, uh, but you know a lot of the a lot of the scenes where there's rubble and collapsed buildings and things they actually used a um, housing estate in Sheffield that was to, you know was going to be demolished and the Sheffield Council just you know said go for it and just let them uh, right let them use it as their playground basically and burn things and blow things up and you know and sure and and, and uh, yeah destroy it basically because that's that's what was going to happen anyway so right. that's what you know a lot of it looks so. Authentic, authentic because it was you know it was real buildings that were falling down yeah it was like after so. the after the second world war they're out to make yeah. of war films exactly. because buildings have yeah. been blown out and mm. stuff so well, that works in, it works in its favor mm. no it is it is a really good movie and it is terrifying <laughs> um i mean we were, we were, we usually talk about the cast i mean there's not a huge amount of cast in this the two the two main people you follow through the film Reese Dinsdale who went on to have uh, quite quite so he's done a lot of TV work but he was in the film ID mm. Have you seen that one yeah the um, yeah. football hooligan probably the the only decent football hooliganism film <laughs> out there oh, apart from the um, the firm the Gary Oldman yeah, yeah. which is also really good ID is really excellent film mm. and his girlfriend is played by Karen Meager who I think she's done some TV work and she's she's still around she does a yeah. few TV things here and there. Um, but she's she actually kind of carries the film herself, mm -hmm. um, although it does you know is about a couple. She really carries most of the film, and she does it really well. I mm -hmm. thought I, I didn't I don't recognise her from anything else, but she does it really well. I mean, Threads is almost like a handbook. It for is what really would yeah happen. yeah. I mean, and, there's a lot of shots of people using like the the guidance. You know, one of the one of the characters looking in the newspaper where it tells you what sort of things you can do if a bomb drops. You know, where you should go how you should protect yourself and fall out and things like that. And then you see them actually doing that and it shows how useless all of that actually is. Yeah, Unless you have a bunker or, or a basement or something where you can really, you know, hunger down and hide and you have loads of supplies and, you know, that was actually, ways of defending yourself, then, you know, you're screwed, basically. That was something else I got for the film, actually, was it felt very much about home mm. because, so the beginning of the film is this couple looking for a new home. Yeah. Obviously, when their families meet, they're at home. And then later on in the film, when they're out, you know, out in the world, there's, there's that shot when they're all kind of scrambling out in the countryside, and the planes fly over, telling them to go back to their home. Yeah, you know, because they're safe. You're safer in your home. Mm. Uh, we can't help you if you're somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And again, and it's kind of also that kind of, uh, you know, pointing to the authorities, kind of taking over and and really getting in your face and and not allowing you to do anything. You mm. know, you can't don't open that can of food. Someone else might need it or and they start shooting people. I mean, it doesn't really, apart from when they do sort of move out of the city a bit, it's, it doesn't really take in the rest of the world or what, you know, what's happened. It, it does no. tell you how many megatons of bombs have been dropped. It does. Uh, you know, I think it says 3,000 across the world and I think 200 and something hit the UK. So it tells you that, you know, the rest of the world is pretty much, or at least, you know, the major cities in Russia and in the US and, and in the UK have probably been decimated. So yeah. what quite what's happened to the rest of the world, you know, not everyone is going to be affected by no, it. And what I learnt in the film, as you say, is like a handbook, you know, is that the dust that comes up, if there's so yeah, many bombs, you get, the, you, get a, you know, you, that, that just sticks around and blocks the out sunlight, the sun. So, even so you if, get winter, well, yeah. nuclear winter. So even if you're not near where a bomb dropped, you're still going to be affected by all this crap in the atmosphere yeah, and basically and again and then from that it gets very cold and yeah. very dark so, so fingers just, crossed you know it never happens yeah fingers crossed <laughs> so, Russia and America we're... keep I think you know that's why you know I think that it's always just talk hopefully and nothing ever comes of it because everyone you know even however crazy a leader of a country might be he knows that you know press that button that's it you know you can't. No one. No one wins in that situation, and that's exactly right. what this film shows you. There's no. There's no victor. You know. There's even a quote in. You know, at one of the protests before the bombs drop. You know, you know, if Russia win, what exactly are they conquering? What do they get? Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a, yeah. a, a corpse <clears throat> of a country. One thing I really liked was um, so near the end of the film, you notice that because I think it jumps like to ten years after mm. the film, 
and even the people's language yeah starts to kind of disappear yeah. as well and people forget how to speak or new children you know children mm. that weren't who were maybe born during or after mm. their their languages started to change mm. which i thought was I thought that was a really interesting no, thing to yeah, do with it. Because it probably would, wouldn't it? It probably yeah. would if you, you know, you didn't you didn't speak to people no. as much or you, you know, you didn't get as much TV or mm. all that kind of stuff. I thought that was a really clever thing to put into it. Yeah. Um, which really shows how, I suppose, how observational this film yeah. is on, on day-to-day life. Can you see it? You lucky, lucky people, it's just been released. Wow. <laughs> on DVD. That's, that's handy. Uh, in the UK <laughs> by... Um, Simply Media, um, who, yeah, they've done a nice restoration of it um, in 2K. I like the uh, nuclear warning on the side there. Yep. (laughs) And it's got, yeah, loads of extras. And um, even though it's a DVD, they they couldn't, for whatever reason, they couldn't get the Blu-ray rights. But despite that, the DVD, I thought, would look really good. You know, for for something that is so old, was made for TV on a budget, you know, the picture is really good. They've done a a lot of work on it and... You know, there's a lot of wobble in it on the text. Originally, they've taken all that out and they've cleaned the picture up and recolor graded it and all sorts of stuff. It was also released a couple of months ago in in the US by a label called Severin Films, but they didn't have the access to the same materials that Simply Media did. So while they did do a restoration and it is on Blu-ray, I mean, I haven't, I don't own it, I haven't compared them, but looking at you know uh, screen grabs of it, it doesn't, it doesn't look any better. Um, even though it's a Blu-ray, right. so you know it's up to you. Where, wherever you live, whatever you want, whatever you want to pick up. This one's got all the same features that, and does have a couple of extras. It's got an extra commentary with Karen Meager, and um, some Radio Times articles. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, we like to recommend films on this mm. channel, and we recommend if you haven't seen it, I mean, watch it. I mean, oh, you know, if, yeah. I mean. If you're into nuclear war films, then <laughs> it might be up your street. But don't watch it for that, because that's not the kind of film you're going to get. It is very visceral, and it is quite... It's extremely intense. But I think it's it's like... It's one, it's almost like one of those films you you should watch at least once. And especially now, it's, you can you can pick up another... Yeah, I mean, I did it. see it said... I'm sure I saw an ad that said it was available for a limited time. I don't know whether that is, how true that is. But okay. um, but yeah, if you want to grab it, then, then do so. Watch or, it before the real apocalypse does come. Yeah. Do um, prepare yourself. Yes, collect. Your... I was actually thinking during the film. Actually, I was like, maybe I should just start going out buying some water. Yeah. You know, buy some loading up, goods. loading up the cellar. Not that I have a cellar. It's just this film makes you just think of all the worst possible I, I t- scenarios. I tell you it's what, crazy. there's one bit if you are British that will, it made me chuckle. Um, when the, when everything's getting blown oh, up, the toilet moment. <laughs> yes, that did make me laugh. Yes, but I'm not talking about that. Bit. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, no, that was good. That was okay. That was two very, chuckles. That was very British moment. Yeah, because <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Um, <laughs> but now the other bit is when when you see the shots of like the streets getting blown up. They pick, you know, obviously there's, you know, they, they show the high street people shopping and everything. Uh, but there's two particular shops that get picked out for you know to have their own image of them you know the storefront exploding and one's Woolworths oh, yeah. and the other one's BHS yeah. which have both um, been obliterated in their own way financially in the last sort of decade. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was quite prophetic that they picked those two shops to, to destroy. Um, yeah, which no longer exist. Great, so that was Threads, and uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. Um, mm-hmm. You know, leave us a comment um, if you if if you were terrified as much as we were by mm. the film, uh, or if you weren't, um, <laughs> or, or if you go out and buy the DVD because uh, you know we like Let us to know recommend. Come back, give us a. Comment. Or if you've got the Blu-ray we mentioned and you think it's perfectly fine, yeah, you know, we, that's we have, cool. I yeah. don't have it to compare, so yeah, let us know what you think of that. Let us know what you think about that one as well. And uh, great. You can also catch us on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yep, yep. You're quite. You're going up on Twitter. Oh, I've got over a hundred followers now. That's it's pretty very cool. exciting. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that is good stuff. <laughs> so yeah, check us out on there. Great. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. Yeah, and we'll see you next week for more.